Okay. okay, and we are live. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, welcome back, and happy World Art Day. We're excited to be back here for another Q&A session, this time with amazing, incredible artists, Ron Husband and Larissa Morantz. So before we begin, I'd just like to mention that, of course, we're running this World Art Day 50% off promotion at New Masters Academy on an annual Library Plus subscription, which also includes three months of coaching, group coaching. Uh, and we have a really exciting giveaway raffle, which you guys can enter. All the links are in the description below the video. So welcome to you both, Ron and Larissa. Uh, and I'll hand it over to you, Larissa. Thank you. Um, thank you, Peter. It's nice to see you again. And I'm really happy to be here with all of you on uh, this World Art Day with New Masters Academy. So I am very excited because I am here with chatting with um, Ron Husband, a true animation legend. Um, I'm going to give you a little bit of an introduction to him if you're not familiar with him. Um, Ron has spent over three decades sprinkling his magic at Disney as an animator. He's brought to life some pretty famous characters like Scar from The Lion King, Jafar from Aladdin, Gaston in Beauty and the Beast, John Silver from Treasure Planet. And he also animated many characters in my favorite movie, Hercules. Um, but Ron, your impact goes way beyond these iconic characters. As Disney's first African-American animator, you broke barriers and blazed trails for future generations. And you're still inspiring artists today as an educator and an author. Your book, Quick Sketching with Ron Husband is a total gem. I have it right here. It's one of my favorites. It's got tabs on it. Um, one of the things I love about this book is that it's not just about technique. It's about capturing moments, um, emotions, and stories in the blink of an eye. And um, you are um, going to be joining New Masters Academy um, soon. You're going to be um, doing some really amazing stuff along the lines of this. And so to watch you draw after seeing your amazing gestures here to actually see your hand move across the page and build these build these drawings um, as you go is a pretty phenomenal thing. And so um, I can't tell you how much this book has influenced my own teaching journey. So that is one of the many reasons why I'm so excited and honored to be here with you today on World Art Day um, to talk about Disney and drawing and all things art. So welcome. Well, thank you. It's, a, it's my pleasure to, uh, to be here. And you, you're here uh, chirping every once in a while in the background. I have a parrot. And whenever I'm doing some electronic things, they just sort of start chirping. So excuse the, the chirp. <laughs> he just wants to be a part of it. But thank you. I appreciate uh, the opportunity to come on and to, to share a little, uh, a little chit chat and, and talk and perhaps uh, uh, your, your listeners will gain a little, um, little wisdom. <laughs> oh, absolutely. I think everyone here who um, knows of you or is going to get to know you here is going to be learning a lot. Um, and I am expecting to as well. Um, you, I've, I've admired you for a very long time, especially having this book um, and on my, by my bookshelf and uh, being an educator myself, utilizing your book in my my own courses has been um, a really am amazing experience. It's an amazing experience for me to be here with you. So um, I wanna get started first by um, asking you a little bit about your early days. Um, so uh, you worked with Frank Thomas and Ollie Johnston. Um, you started at Disney in the very beginning, training with other lead character animation artists like Glenn Keane. Um, and he wrote the foreword in this book, quick sketching. I believe he called you affectionately Huzz. Is that right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Office mates? Yeah, yeah. Glenn was the first person I met when I went to Disney. Um, I had no idea of um, that I would end up in animation. I had gone to, um, to college and my portfolio was uh, geared towards, um, I wanted to be an illustrator, book and magazine illustrator. Mm -hmm. And um, and strangely, it seems I went to the uh, went to school. Uh, actually, I went to, after high school, I went to uh, Southern California, born and raised, Monrovia to be exact. And I went to um, Citrus College, local junior college after mm -hmm. high school and I played football. Uh, so, Jack, right? And so I played football, and I got a football scholarship to the University of Nevada, Las Vegas, where I ended up um, graduating from there and uh, 
I'm shaping my portfolio to be a commercial artist. And uh, coming back to Southern California, uh, there are no um, commercial art jobs for people. Pretty, pretty, somebody starting out, you know, Chicago, New York, where they have publishing places where the opportunity. So I took a job doing uh, block diagrams and flow charts for uh, uh, a company. And after about a year and a half, uh, I, I said, you know, I wanted to do something more creative. And so yeah. I want to be around creative. I want to do something creative. I have to be around creative people. And I took a night class at Art Center College of Design in Pasadena. Okay. And uh, and my instructor was a gentleman by the name of Sam McKim, who is a Disney legend. Uh, he's an Imagineer. Oh. They they uh, build and design design and build the rides for the theme parks. But he was teaching a class at night, and he told me about a program that Disney has started in 1971. This is 1974. 75 and he told me about this well he told a class about the program and um i followed up on uh, his advice or information and uh, disney has started this program uh to train again uh prospective animators to be uh, artists to be animators uh you mentioned the name frank thomas Ali johnson no call those gentlemen worked on snow white in 1975 now it's 1970, excuse me, 1937 when it was released. Now it's 1975, and they're still working at the board, animating. Mm -hmm. They were trained up like a, a, a second team or somebody to come along behind. And literally, animation was going to die at Disney unless they brought in some fresh blood. So in order to take advantage of these older gentlemen's experience and advice, then they would, they're going to bring in a younger generation so these guys can pass on their knowledge. Mm -hmm. And so they started to work the training program. Um, like I said this was in 1971, they started the program. And the animation wasn't like the big 800 pound grill that it is today. You know, gaming, animation, all the studios doing back in the, Back in those days, it was Disney, you got the Hanna Barbera doing t TV animation, you had, you know, like uh, Ralph Bashi and a couple other independents, but nothing on the, on the, on the, um, on the scale it is today. Feature. Mm -hmm. He would do it a picture like once every three or four years. Yeah. And uh, so um, they, the program wasn't, people were banging on the door down trying to get into the program. And uh, Art Lord, um, Eric Larson was going literally worldwide trying to uh, spread the news and bring in prospective artists. And I, had, I applied, and there had been people in the program. Uh, it was a, a training program that lasted four weeks in which you would do a, a pencil, simple pencil test. And if your pencil test was good enough, uh, then they would give, extend that time for another four weeks. Okay. And so whenever, whenever, whenever you started, that started your four weeks. So there were people there on various um, um, time limits of their four weeks. And Glenn happened to be there. He got there about six months before I did. So he was the first person I met. Uh, so we, we we became fast friends and uh, roommates, and we're still friends even to this day. But uh, when I came in, I knew nothing about animation. Uh, I could just draw. That's all you needed, though, to get in. And, and uh, my portfolio was uh, recently um, Eric Larson, who's the head of the program. He said, you know, your portfolio is fine, but that's not what we want to see. We want to see quick sketches. Hmm. I had not included any of that in my sketchbook. I mean, in my portfolio, because I had no idea what an animator did. What an animator, I knew nothing about animation. I hadn't seen an animated picture for probably about 10 or 12 years since I was like 12 or 13 years old, maybe, maybe older than that. But they, uh, well, I went home, got three sketchbooks because I have been carrying sketchbooks since I have sketchbooks go back to 1962 when I was 12 years old. Wow, that's incredible. So I, have, I had all these sketchbooks, and in high school, my high school art teacher encouraged the class to carry a sketchbook, which I started carrying that sketchbook on a daily basis my junior year in high school. And that's another story in itself. But I went I home. I know it is. <laughs> I'm sure it is. Got three sketchbooks and dropped them off to guard check and went back to my um, job. And they called me a short time later, said that I could enter into the program. 
and it was going to be based on my quick sketch books. They accepted me into the program without any animation experience whatsoever. And so, the, but the training in uh, to be an animator was not in drawing. Probably 80% of our training was in um, if, it, as if we were preparing for a play. It was acting, uh, it was performance. Uh, we looked at uh, old silent films, Charlie Chaplin, Buster Keaton, Lauren Hardy. Um, we looked at those for body language, for uh, facial expressions, timing. So that was what our training was was basically based on uh, performance, and the drawing was like literally secondary. You know, you, uh, to but the, but because what you remember about an animated film is um, the characters' personalities. You know, it's not that it's drawing. The idea for a story is to get you to forget that it's a drawn picture, and to get you to follow the storyline and to get involved. With the characters and so that was that was what we were learning so after the first four four weeks you pass second four weeks um if you if you pass that test because there's no there's a once you got in the training program there's no guarantee you're going to stay I see. it just tests you for four weeks sink or swim and probably about about 50 percent of people would not pass that first four weeks Second four weeks maybe two out of every three people would pass that second wave and then once you pass the second wave of a little short pencil test they said we were on the second floor they sent you downstairs to the first floor where they're working on the uh the features and um frank thomas happened to be working on uh the rescuers at the time frank and glenn king came out came down together they found a room for us so we and i room together and he was doing in between for ollie johnson and i was doing in between for frank thomas and that's how I learned animation, uh, doing in-betweens. That's amazing. So um, for those of us who are animation students like myself, um, we grew up on this book. This is literally the Bible, like the, the illusion of life, right? Yeah. Um, by, written by Frank Thomas and Ollie Johnson. Um, yeah. And the, you, these are people that you trained with. And so, um, and um, that they're affectionately called the, the nine old men, like they're two of the nine old men um, of Disney and say they were the, the legends that, that trained the next generation of artists. And now you are one of those legends um, that, are moving on as um you know a Disney animator. Um so now you're a legend or you've been a legend. Um yeah, there's there's a there's a, <laughs> there's a certain there's a ceremony where you become a Disney legend. I I I'll I'll live with like legendary That's legendary. Like, yeah I got I don't want to step on the toes of anybody who's been nominated and 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 officially crowned a, le a Disney legend. I mean there are there, Glenn's okay. a legend uh, there is just people who who, who pass that category. So I so I I haven't gotten there uh yeah well okay we will call you legendary legendary <laughs> <Disney> animator <laughs> <on this one. laughs> so um what was it like to come up in the ranks with like like glenn keen as your office mate and as you kind of continue to move through like project to project and project like what was that experience like um like starting with these you know your colleagues and we're all starting at the same at the same place and then just project and project working up. What was that like? Uh, it was really, um, yeah, it, it was a, a friendly camaraderie and everyone was, you know, it was encouraging everyone else. Plus the older gentlemen, the older animators were really very uh, generous about their time and, and, mm -hmm. and trying to encourage us to uh, to grow. Uh, stuff like Milk called Milk was like in a, Bill Call was like in a, a world of his own, you know, so he didn't have time for, you know, little little buds coming up, but with Frank and Ali and, and all, you know, they were just so giving of their time and patience and really helping us to really understand um, animation, you know, that it was, it was, a, it was more than just drawing pictures, it was emotions. And uh, in those, those days, I got this bird, I hope you don't hear this stuff too. Barely, barely. Okay. And in those days, you had to do 100 feet of animation to get a screen credit. And uh, on Rescuers, uh, Frank would give me little scenes that were, you know, little action scenes, things that, that were, uh, that I could handle so that he could be free to do some more, you yeah. know, juicy acting, close-up dialogue stuff. 
and I did about 51 feet on uh, on the rescuers before the animation came to an end, and uh, we went on to another uh, picture. And uh, so I didn't get any screen credit. You know, I worked on doing in betweens for Frank, and on uh, my uh, weekends and after work, I'd be working on the scenes that he'd give me, and so doing um, um, under his supervision. So mm -hmm. it was about 51 feet before it, it, it ended. And then um, I did the next picture up was um, Peace Dragon. I did another 50, about 50 feet on Peace Dragon, uh, doing in betweens for Gary Goldman, who was uh, one of the supervised animators for Peace Dragon. Uh, but still, you know, close but no cigar. Mm. You, had, you had to get 100 feet. And, and, and it finally, needed to be 100 feet total on the film to get that credit. Yeah, yeah. So you couldn't take 50 from one and 50 feet. You couldn't, yeah. no. Mm -hmm. Didn't work that way. You know, so yeah. I was uh, in between there and then the uh, assistant and I see my in between there and the, and the in between with more experience becomes a breakdown person and yeah. the breakdown person becomes an assistant animator and, and the assistant animator can, be, can become an animator. But any one of those, um, uh, this could be a, that could be your career. You could be a career in between. <laughs> yeah, and there are career in betweeners. Yeah, yeah, yes, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, and so, um, so, but uh, the next picture up uh, was um, the small one, and I, I hit 100 feet on a small one. That was my first screen credit. Uh, that, that uh, yeah, so that put me in the ranks of being in these first. African American animator. So I got him out for that. I mean, you'd been animating up until then, but that was when you know you got recognized, right? Yeah, yeah. You got to join the union. You, you got a union salary. You got the you got the screen credit. You know, online. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. I see. So that really was important to. Obviously, as an artist, we need validation and and understand like recognition for the work that you're doing but it not only came with the screen credit it came with all of the other things the benefits of getting yeah, yeah, that yeah, recognition yeah. that's really yeah. interesting that's what the young the young the younger animators were shooting for that goal you know that, that was like the, uh, the, the holy grail they were shooting for to get to get there uh to, to be named an animator so you know so we were all trying to we were pulling for each other to, you know, come on come on come on Oh, so it was really supportive that you sounded oh, yeah. like. Support. And, and even today, the animation community uh, is tremendously supportive, uh, but the, and particularly back in those days, because, you know, we we're all young and all sort of uh, going together because, you know, the pictures really didn't start to, to gel and come together until um, um, probably um, in 80, 80, whenever um, Great Mouse Detective came out. You know, Great Mouse Detective, because mm -hmm. Ron Clemens and John Musker, you know, young guys got an opportunity to direct, and uh, you know, the younger guys sort of band together because that was that's basically what all it was in those days. You know, the younger guys, and we started getting you know, the picture started getting stronger as far as stories telling, yeah, and getting and building and building and building and building, and that um, that um, that tra trajectory of uh, of upgrowth was uh, as the young guys started getting better. You know, we started getting better at our craft. I am assuming that. I mean, you've contributed to over 18 animated features during mm -hmm. your tenure at Disney. Um, during that time, you've animated like a diverse range of characters. You've animated animals, um, humans, you've done he heroes, you've done villains. Um, I'm curious, is there anything that you brought, like um, that you learned from animating one character that you would bring to the next project or anything that you learned that you, that, um, or anything that you had to ignore um when animating a new character in a new project yeah, yeah each one each character is is unique um you know if you were you i started off doing like a lot of crowd scenes and, mm -hmm. and incidental characters and uh gaining from that experience then you, you may narrow it down to if you're working with a single character the same um concepts you want uh, clarity you want uh, balance proportion perspective solid drawing and looking at a crowd of characters you got you know crowds you know the, all the crowds have to stand out and they have to they don't need to run into one another but an overlap so there's there's things you uh, you learn trying to work out a crowd scene and you take that same uh, mindset into a single character so now, you know the facial fe facial features have to be distinct, and uh, you know the arms have to be away from the body in the sense of getting silhouette, proper silhouette, proper 
proper um, balance proportion. And, uh, and, that's, and that's third, I was saying that each one of the characters are individual. Um, Jolly the goat is four-legged, but he's different from the elk in the five-bird sequence. You know, because they're, you know, they're, there's, you know, one's a large animal, the other is a smaller animal. Um, and you got the personality of Gaston, personality of Jafar, personality of John Smith. So you're looking at individual body language, uh, how their, um, their body types, um, you know, and doing research. I uh, really think one thing I really appreciate about uh, the Disney studios is that, that we spend a lot, a lot of time just researching the characters so that we can bring our air of uh, believability and realism to the characters that we're, we're, uh, we're animating. I spent a day, when I was doing um, Jolly, I spent a day down at uh, Disneyland, they had a petting zoo. And uh, they've got a, like a barbecue restaurant behind Big Thunder Mountain now, but at one time it was a, like a, a small petting zoo where they had small farm animals. So I was mm -hmm. way down there uh, touching and feeling the goat and watching the goats move around and and how they uh, they literally move around and they're 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 analyzing their actions. And uh, when I did the elk and firebird, I went up to a elk farm in uh, Montana uh, to uh, research elk, the kind of elk that that the, the directors uh, Paul and Gaetan Brici want. You know these, these big. Yeah, and, <laughs> big antlers. <laughs> and it's just seeing um, you know, how they look and how they acted and and moved around in their environment because it was it was like twenty eight below zero, so it was, it was freezing up there. Oh wow! And and, the, and it was snow all you know just, the whole place was covered with snow, and so they, to to see the uh, these elk in their environment and how they move because you know the firebird sequence starts off in the snow, and and, and so you know to, it, it gave me. Um, some good experience. And when we did Lion King, we spent time down to San Diego Zoo and Wild Animal Park looking at the animals. You know, so uh, getting a real uh, first-hand look at, uh, at at these animals that you're not going to see uh, every day. Yeah. Uh, they even brought a, a full-grown lion into the, to the studio for us to to draw uh, again to get to gain that realism, so that when we caricature it, we'd have. Um, a reality to to um, to base it on. Yeah, uh, and as uh, animation artists, our animation students learn a lot about drawing animals. That's part of the the training is to go into zoos and to draw from life, doing these gesture sketches. And so it makes sense that as a Disney animation artist, you would be you know in these places and you know going to Montana and going to these places doing the the research so you can get that believability. I mean if you were trained as an animation artist to be more concerned about the acting and the liveliness and the how to create the feeling of believability in in the characters that you're creating it makes sense that you'd want to see how they move and things like that um and to bring that believable reality to it which kind of reminds me of this thing um that um I believe Don Hahn was talking about. Now, Don Hahn was a producer on um, The Lion King. And uh, he, I I first met him when he uh, came to a, a university, an art, art university that where we met, um, we were colleagues very briefly, uh, you and I, uh, at a at an art school. Um, Don Hahn came in to do a, a graduation, um, the graduation talk. Um, and uh, he mentioned, um, he mentioned uh, a quote that he he talked about uh, that he he said during a particular um, difficult sequence. I think that, and I believe it was during the Lion King. Um, and I don't know if it was Andrea De, De Andrea Deja that was um, animating. I'm not sure who it was. Maybe you can um, clarify this for me. But there was a particular sequence that was done and it was complete, but it was not correct. And the and you know, as an animation artist, how much work goes into just creating a minute of animation. That's a lot, a lot of work. And what he said was that the, there was a little bit of a pushback, I believe, by the artist who did not want to do it all over again um, because of how much pain it was going to be. And he said, pain is temporary, but suck is forever. And and when he said that, 
I, it, it seared in my mind because of what that means as an artist, especially working um, on legendary legacy films like with Disney that you are putting in the work and you're making something that's going to live on forever. Um, and if you don't get it right, it's going to be there forever. Um, did you experience any of that um, kind of it, <laughs> working on Lion King or anything where you where you maybe did something that you were happy with but wasn't working well and you had to go back and rework? Yeah, but it, you know, if it's not working well, that's the, um, the director's um, decision. You know, because you're not going to get anything cut into the to the reel. You know, unless it's working properly, and it's it's advancing the story, or it's advancing the characters' personalities, and if it's not, then it's uh, expendable. And and if something's uh, not working, and you think if it's not working, it's because of what the context is something before or something after that this scene doesn't fit into the flow of the story. Mm -hmm. and, and it may have to be reworked or, or done over. Uh, and so that becomes a, a director's decision as to uh, what has to uh, be working on, what has to be uh, uh, beefed up or toned down. Uh, so that's why we have directors to give us that direction because we're making their picture. You know, they're, right. it, it's, it, and we're helping them to, to bring their vision alive. And so if, they're, if what we do does not match up with their what they think or have a, a mind to, then uh, you know it either has to be re revised, uh, added to, subtracted from, or discarded. Uh, and my way of working, I've always done thumbnail sketches, which is uh, not a whole lot different from a quick sketch. Mm -hmm. my, I, I look at my quick sketches as um, practice. It, it helps me in my illustration work. It also helps me in my animation work. And so I do these little thumbnail sketches and I show them to the director so that they'll get a pretty good idea of what I have in mind before I actually have animated anything. Mm -hmm. so with the director's go ahead, having seen these little rough sketches that I would go and do a, a pencil test of those rough sketches based on the, um, the time length of the scene, the intent of the scene, any uh, sound, um, voice, um, a text that goes along with it, and maybe um, shoot it on, on eight, every eight frames, and show the director that pencil rough test on eight, on eight, we call eights, mm -hmm. just, you know, just little, so he'll get a pretty idea, pretty good idea of, um, of where I'm going based on my quick sketches. Now I've got this test on eights. And he says yes, or maybe a little, little bit more time there, a little, little, uh, not this, let's take this out. So at that point, you know, I'm still animating with confidence, but I'm also animating according to the direction that I've been given and the director is in on every step of the process. Then I take that and I would put it on, on, on fours, shoot on fours, shoot on eights, or excuse me, so fours on twos, and if it has to go on ones, so I'm taking step by, but each one of those steps, I'm showing the director. So the director is not surprised nice. when he sees the scene that I bring him mm -hmm. and he's ready, because he's aware of the continuity, what come, the scene that comes before, the scene that comes after, and is this gonna fit into the stream of the storytelling? And so I've never really run into a problem of having to redo a scene, mm. unless they would actually revamp the whole um, storyline. Mm -hmm. right. well, th th this section isn't working, so we have to revamp that. We have to do something for that. Yeah. And, so, and sometimes things go to us to a certain point to where it's necessary. And uh, the second release of uh, Beauty and the Beast, there's a song called uh, Human Again. In mm -hmm. the first release, uh, there wasn't in the picture because it didn't do anything to uh, enhance the storyline nor give any more insight into the characters. So it was um, cut out and it just flowed seamlessly. But they had included that in, in the musical, you know, when they did the musical and all, they had included that because, you know, it was basically it was a musical. And so they had all get all the song you can in. But it, with the scene, that sequence went into storyboard 
but it never got animated. And then uh, when they re-released Beauty and the Beast, they said, okay, let's have a hook and uh, you know give people more, a little bit more for their money. And uh, so uh, we went in and we actually they brought in some of the animators who had really animated on Beauty and the Beast, and we did Human Again. And it, you know, it, it fit, but you know, it, the first time around, it wasn't you know, it wasn't doing anything. And so, uh, it did, you know, story wise, but mm -hmm. now it was, it was in there, it didn't really do anything other than sort of uh, have room for a song and some, some more acting, some more things, but it didn't do anything. But the main story would, could go on with, with or without it, right? Yeah. Yeah, I, well, it's really great to know that using the thumbnail sketches that you are like basically doing now and in gesture and your gesture sketching book um, is the reason why you are able to kind of uh, avert uh, having to redo anything because your intention was seen in those quick sketches. And that's something that as an educator, I'm always telling my art students as illustrators and animators is you get that down really fast. You don't spend you don't expend a lot of time in those gestures, it's just a few seconds, you get it down and then you can see the flow. You can see the intention of what you're doing. And if it works, then you know to move forward. And if it doesn't, then you know, you just keep you just keep developing those sketches. Yeah. So that's, and and that's one of the reasons why your, yeah, like your your book um, is, is so integral in, in the teaching that I do. But I, I wanted to ask you a, a couple more, just one more question about working um, in, at Disney as an animator. Um, um, we have a mutual friend, David Prexma, who is an animator. And I think that he's the one who maybe brought you into the fold of teaching where we were colleagues for a brief moment. But I was curious as if there were any like really interesting or funny or memorable moments during your 30 years uh, working at Disney that you might be willing to share with us. Well, and if you have any fun stories about Dave, Pro Dave Proxima, that would be okay too. No, it, um, she was, you know, the, the, the time at Disney was, um, was such a, 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 a fun time in the sense that, um, you know, I worked at work. I was, I was in a situation for 38 years uh, with Disney Studios, getting a paycheck, uh, but I didn't go to work a day in my life. I went to a situation where I got paid to draw pictures. And that, that you know, that, that natural God-given talent to be able to draw, and I got paid for it. So I, I, I wasn't working. I was in a situation where I was learning. I mean, and my learning is still going on, on today. You know, I'm mm -hmm. still learning today. Um, but, you know, you, you want to be good at what you do. And... Um, and so that was one of the, the motivating forces, you know, to, to continue to improve and to and continue to get better and stronger as an animator, as an artist, as a communicator, because a writer communicates with words and an artist communicates with drawn pictures. So how effectively can you communicate? And with, with um, balance, proportion, perspectives, solid drawing, and then you add in doing the timing and you know body language, you know all these things that go into making a good drawing. And I, you know, I'm, I'm teaching, and when I teach, I, I, I start off with this one word: quick sketch, illustration, animation. One big word. <laughs> because the things that you look for in a good quick sketch, you look at the quick sketch book, and it can't help but put a smile on your face when you look at some of the images. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. I, I, is that okay? Can I share? I mean, I've got your book here, and and you mentioned that you were in football, which makes now perfect sense to me why there are so many football drawings in this book. Um, yeah. The way that you've captured the movement, I mean, just the play by play, and of like, and especially this one here. Moment. Yeah, you capture the moment. Yeah, but but you got silhouette value, you got balance, you got proportion, you got perspective, you got an action that's taking place, and everything reads in that quick sketch. Sixty seconds or less. So you're 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 putting that slow around. These are sixty second drawings. Uh, Most of these. An individual character would be sixty seconds or less, and maybe 
Uh, it's got two characters. Maybe it's going to run a little bit more. Or it's multiple characters, but the individual characters, there's 60 seconds or less. But there's silhouette value. There's there's a balance report, except for you know if they're falling or knocked off balance. Right. But, but there's still and there's still communication because there's there's silhouette value. There's balance. There's proportion. There's perspective, and there's there's um, you know body types. And that's communication. And the same thing you look for in a good quick sketch, the same thing you look for in a, in an illustration, because you can use those same principles. You look for what in an illustration? Balance, proportion, perspective, solid drawing. In an animation, same thing. Balance, proportion, perspective, solid drawing. So quick sketch, illustration, animation. When we're, <laughs> if, you, if you could get one, you should be able to transfer that same information to another because it's about communication. And so, and then it's the, the emotional aspect of it. Because you look at those quick sketches, you thumb through those, my scripture, and you and it's, it's bound to put a, a smile on your face. And that's that's what you want. You want to touch emotions. Yeah, and I, I like this one here. This is literally a uh, subtitled "The Emotion of the Game." Um, it, it and it's it's killing me right now just knowing that it took you what like two minutes to draw this. But um, oh, yeah. like, right, and um, yeah. just the the movement, the silhouette of the arms open, outspread. You've got the legs of the of the the football player running towards his teammate, about to embrace in this like celebratory hug. Um, the value of the football player shirt behind him is what is giving us a clear silhouette of the leg in the front so we can see that really clearly it just um the 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 overlap of one character on top of another gives us that sense of depth um the tonal value that you're using in order to to, to read the helmet and the 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 uniform like there's so much there's so much that goes into this two minute drawing that requires so much study and observation and learning and things. And so knowing now, like knowing your background and knowing all of the work that you've done, um, and of course it's easy for you to do this in two minutes, but um, for one, uh, like say a new master's academy art student who comes here and they want to do this, <laughs> they want to do this tomorrow, but they can't because they're still learning. Um, what are some of the things that you would really um, stress to them in terms of how to get to this point, aside from getting this book, by the way, very, very yeah. good book. Basic shapes, you know, there's four basic shapes, circle, square, rectangle, triangle, and trying to utilize those four basic shapes. Um, I'm, you know, I'm talking to students, right? Think about the four basic shapes because everything around you is going to be made up of one of those shapes or a combination of those shapes. Mm -hmm. uh, find it not only the negative shapes, but the positive shapes. You got to you, you draw you, Most of us are, are concentrated on positive shapes. I'm going to do this, but the negative shapes around the positive shapes, they're just important. Um, observation. Um, before I start quick sketching, I will observe my subjects for 15, 20 minutes before mm. I have a pen to start. And that way you're sort of developing a muscle memory of, of what takes place when this action take occurs. You walk people, you see people walk, well, you know, you're gonna get this, you're gonna get this, you're gonna get this over and over and over again. It's gonna be mm. your body, body type, but this is what you're gonna get. And so you're thinking about this if you're drawing or you think about drawing people that are walking and sit in a mall or someplace, and you're gonna see this over and over again, this this action, you're gonna see it over and over. And that's gonna help build your retention as to what takes place on a walk. You're gonna see people rising and falling because it's, it's, this is gonna uh, lowest pose, highest pose, higher. mm -hmm. lowest, highest. You're gonna see this and you're gonna see people Doing this. Swaying. And they were doing this because when one foot comes off the ground, the head has to go for the foot that's taken away. So you, you're going to see this. Mm -hmm. Stay earth. on balance. Mm -hmm. Stay on balance. Balance, proportion, perspective. So you're sort of looking and seeing these things happen. And that's what's going to be a part of 
your muscle memory is you're going to remember as you start to draw. Yeah. And because uh, yeah, by the time you put pencil to pen, pencil to paper, they've already gone. Yeah. So what are you going to remember about that? Well, I remember this. And if this is happening, then if the if the right front leg is going forward, then the left arm is going forward. Yeah. Back and forth. Mm -hmm. And you start to put these things together. It takes time. It, it takes a lot of time to sort of put all this stuff together. It's not going to come in one drawing or overnight, but observation. Yeah. And yeah. then just get in there and just start. Just just roughly put in what you can in a limited amount of time, a minute or less. You know, mm -hmm. there's overlay and, and detail, put a lot of details on a drawing. That's not what it's about. It's about Body language, right, and the essence. Balance. You get the proportion. You get, to, and that's one step at a time. Mm -hmm. Um. So, hearing you say that it requires a lot of careful observation, that you spend maybe a good 10, 15 minutes before you even begin drawing, that is building your visual vocabulary. You're getting that muscle memory in there. You're becoming really aware and comfortable with your. Um, your subject matter, so to speak, um, that makes a whole lot of sense to me. I would use your, I would use your book um, before I would take my students out to sketch crawls at different places like downtown Disney or the Irvine Spectrum, and I would, I would preach. <laughs> I would preach Ron Husband's words and say, you need to capture the essence, and you need to capture the overall shape, and and all of these things that you're saying. And so, um, like. Oftentimes, I would give my students just a few minutes to just stare at their at their subject. In fact, one thing that we would do that I, I just want to share that I think it was really fun is we would I would unfairly point out one individual who maybe looked a little bit unique and interesting, and I would say, "We're just going to watch this person and watch them walk by." And after they walked by, we would then draw them. We would then draw them, and then we would compare how we all you know captured yeah. that individual, yeah. which I always thought was really fun because everyone's got their own unique voice of um in the way that they that they create their work so yeah, so yeah. it's 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 wonderful to hear you say all of these things and um that the method in which you're you're doing them um one thing that i do want to ask you is that um this book which is such an integral book i think um for animation artists along with this amazing along with this amazing book here and all the programs that uh, new, Ma new masters academy has to offer um how what brought you into creating this book what was your impetus for making this book aside from the fact that you had so many drawings to put into it yeah i um i was i was starting to teach in the early stages i was still working at disney uh and i was uh teaching a class and uh so it was if i uh, to get the information to more a broader audience mm -hmm. then maybe i could put it in, in the book form because all along for years 20 years ago, 30 years ago, they said, Ron, you want to write a book about that? Because I was always sketching, you know, work everywhere. I said, you want to write a book? I said, no, 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 I don't have time. And then I said, okay, well, I'll, I'll be able to reach a broader audience. And so I, I took five years off. I did. I was doing freelance assignments and my own personal work. So I'm not going to do any of that. I'm just going to go through my sketchbooks, find images that match up with the dialogue, the, the train of thought that I'm trying to get across. And I spent literally five years um, getting that information, writing things down, and um, and my wife was doing almost right, you know all, all our grunt work, you know, doing all this, the scanning, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah that's great. So, but uh, after five years, um, you know, I, I had some a lot, just a lot of drawings together and a little bit of dialogue, and um, and I happened to uh, have a conversation with Don Hahn, and Don. I had just finished uh, the book by um, editing the book by um, Walt Sanchville. And mm -hmm. he was in contact with uh, the editor at Focal Press. He said, well, um, let me uh, let me see if I can hook you up with uh, the contact I have uh, who's, been, who's been working on, on Walt's book. And that's just your drawing for animation, which is another yeah. phenomenal book. And uh, so he put me in contact with a gentleman at, at Focal Press and uh, sent over a rough copy of my of what I had. He said, "Yeah, we we can we could probably work on this. Uh, how is it different from Walsh Stansfield's book? Because you look at my book, look Walsh's book, they're pretty much similar, 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 but Walt used used models for his, and I'm preaching live action stuff. Yeah. 
So there was a definite, definite difference and say, okay, yeah, maybe we can run with this. So so my original title was um, What's in a Line? Huh. And that was, uh, what, and then after a while, you know, he said, well, let's, we need to capitalize on the Ron Husband. So that's a quick session with Ron Husband. So that became the title. And, and it was fortunate too that I, that I had an editor, you know, to be able to go through and sort of um, direct me as to what I was, uh, Naming some of my um, my chapters, <laughs> the chapter on, on, on uh, drawing children. Yes, uh, it was like it, my original title was capturing children. No, <laughs> <laughs> so I, you had to be. Well, so, no, I'm a mother of so three. They had, to, they, had in, yeah, they had to reel me in on a couple of things, you know. So I'm glad I had an editor uh, to sort of uh, reel me in on uh, some of my um, my texts. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, and and uh, so it, it turned out really, really, um, uh, you know, people have really responded to that, and I really appreciate uh, uh, you using, utilizing it because that's what it's for—to encourage, uh, inspire young artists to draw more. Yes, absolutely. And then, um, and I and I've looked at this. I, I've uh, it just um, really, really fantastic work. Um, Peter, nice to see you again. How are we doing? Do we need to end soon? I'm so sorry to interrupt, guys. Uh, we are at the hour. Uh, feel free to keep going for a couple more minutes uh, and and wrap things up. I know we started late. This has been such a wonderful conversation, okay. though. And then in a few minutes, we'll jump over to the Q and A session with Catherine and Bill. Okay. Thanks for the heads up warning, because I do want to throw uh, like maybe one or two more questions at Ron, if you don't mind. Um, okay. So. Um, now that you're working as an educator, I was wondering um, what you find most interesting about being an educator, and um, how does that impact your own your own artistic work now? And um, the second follow up question is, what are you working on now? Yeah, um, it, it's it's gratifying as an educator, and you being an educator, you know that you know when when the light goes on, they they get it. You know, he's talking about uh, basic shapes and, and negatives and, and positives, and, and and they start to put put it's, it starts to come out on 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 their work. You know that, that what you're trying to get them to do it comes, up, and that's the, the gratifying part. You know, and uh, I'm, I'm doing a regular uh, figure drawing class with a model. I'm doing a, a fundamental class with you know students who have little to no artistic ability. Wow, wow. Uh, so they're, they're trying to, they just got to get, they got to get, they got to take this class to, to move on. Okay. You know? And that, that becomes a challenge. And it's fun, you know, when, when, when a person that can't draw a stick figure can figure out, well, this, this, this circle can be made into a head and this triangle can be, oh, this, 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 this shape right here. And, and they start to figure that out. That, that, that's so gratifying, you know, um, just to see the, the kids uh, sort of respond to, to what you're trying to get get across and the things you've been talking about all semester, uh, that they're starting to, to filter down and, and it's, oh, yeah, I, you ask me a question, oh, I know that, I know that. <laughs> and and that, that, yeah, that, that, that's the fun part for me. That's awesome. And um, so the other question was, uh, what are you working on? Are you working on anything right now? Uh, yeah, I'm working on some um, some artwork for some cards, some greeting cards. And uh, I've got uh, some ideas and uh, that I've had in storage for a while. Uh, and um, if I've, I've got some uh, pen and ink work, I, I, like, I like working pen and ink. And, uh, I see my pen and ink work. Yeah, I got push. Yeah, yeah. So those things take about a year to do. So uh, once I commit to that, you know, it's like a, a long commitment. So so I've got a couple of ideas brewing. So that when I take on a, and and do a, a another major piece, you know, that it's the right piece that uh, that I want to uh, spend some time with. Uh, so I got a couple of things on the back back burner, and there's some other things that are happening. Um, I mean, like, you know, I got a call that you know, I can do this Louis Vuitton commercial for me. So, oh, yeah, let me squeeze that in. So, mm -hmm. yeah, there's, all, there's all kind of stuff happening, you know. Uh, yeah, so I'm just open. Yeah. As an artist, you know, you're going to be flexible and 
uh, open to new things. Yeah, absolutely. Well, the students that you have currently, I don't know if they know how lucky they are to be wor working under your, your tutelage. Um, and it sounds exciting, all the things that you've got coming up. Um, I look forward to, to seeing your um, new class that was just promoted today on New Masters Academy. Mm -hmm. And um, watching you draw is going to be a really exciting thing. Mm -hmm. It's been great having this conversation with you today, Ron. Yeah, I appreciate it. Yeah, yeah, um, and you know, and I'm going to use your um, uh, your technique of, of just watching one person and not each other. Yeah, that, that, that's great. Yeah. You always learning something. You always these nuggets are coming in. So you just toss me a nugget. So I'm gonna, I'm going to chew on that. Thank you. That's awesome. I gave you something. Yes, you did. Thank you. Oh, thank that's you. exciting. All right. Thank well, you. thanks for being here, and um, thank you, Peter, for uh, letting us be here, and um, Letting Thank us you. Thank you so much, uh, Larissa and Ron, for being here. It's been such a treat to have you, have you and such an amazing discussion. Uh, thank you both. And everybody, uh, feel free to check the description under the video for links to our promotion and our giveaway as well. And we're really excited to jump over in just a moment to Catherine and uh, Bill Perkins. All right. Catherine Bobkowski, Bill Perkins. Thank you, both of you. Okay, uh, stream is done. I have to jump, guys, but 